Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop to create an HDR image. I'm going to be working out of Bridge, and you're going to see at one point we're going to use Adobe Camera Raw. Also, I'm going to assume that you know how to use a DSLR camera in manual mode and that you have a good idea of what is meant by exposure and how to set the camera. So, let's get started. Uh, just a little bit of backstory. I'm recording this in January 2021. We are currently in lockdown, so I'm teaching from home, and I needed a scene that had a wide range of brightnesses so I could show you when and how to use the HDR feature in Photoshop. But it all starts with taking the photo, so let's have a look at what I was doing. I'm inside my house and I'm taking a photo from the inside to the outside, but I want to include a little bit of the inside, which is very dark compared to the outside. Here's what it looks like close up. You can see I have a few things on the windowsill. You can't really see what they are. You can't see anything on the walls. This is not a very balanced exposure. Here are the settings, F8 for decent depth of field, ISO 400 so I don't go too high and create a lot of noise. 1 over 100 is a hand-holding shutter speed. I am hand-holding here, although when you do your HDR images, you're going to want to put that on a tripod, so you'll be able to use a slower shutter speed if necessary. Here's the same image, same F8, same 1 over 100 shutter speed, but ISO 3200 to show you what's going on inside. And to really show you the brightness difference, you can see now that I can see the inside here. I'm completely blown out on the outside. So the idea is going to be to take a photo or a series of photos here that can be combined into one that has the wide range of brightnesses that HDR is known for. Here are those images. I changed the scene slightly and I've moved to a tripod at this point. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six images to capture the wide range of brightnesses and you can see the camera settings here. I'm going to start with the darkest one, make it a bit bigger. F8 1 over 50 ISO 200 gets me the outside exposure but not much doing on the inside. Next one, I've gone to two times longer shutter speed, okay, that's called one stop longer or one stop more light, same aperture and ISO. Getting a little bit brighter outside, blowing out some highlights in the snow, also starting to get brighter on the inside. Next one, two times longer shutter speed, one stop longer, same aperture and ISO. Now getting brighter in here, getting too bright out there, and so on, and so on and to the last one. Once you have a wide enough range of brightnesses in your source images, you're ready to do the following. Click on the first, hold down shift, and click on the last. That will select everything in the range. Go to Tools, go Photoshop, go Merge to HDR Pro. If Photoshop is not already launched, it'll launch automatically, and Photoshop will combine the images. It's going to be looking for the bright areas that are not blown out, it's going to be looking for the dark areas that are not crushed. Eventually you're going to get to this screen here where you see Photoshop's best guess about what you might want from your image. You can already see it's better than any of the individual images, but there's more work to be done. It's going to show you the source images at the bottom. You can scroll through there. You can include or exclude certain images by clicking on the buttons here, but I'm going to keep them all. It's important that this drop-down menu be set to 32-bit and that you also click this, Complete Toning in Adobe Camera Raw. Remove Ghosts is something that you need if there are things moving in your photos. For example, if I was shooting a landscape and the clouds were moving, then they would move slightly from one image to the next. Photoshop can combat that, but nothing's moving in here, so I don't need to. When you're ready, click Tone in ACR, Adobe Camera Raw, which is now going to launch. Now when it does, you go about editing the same way that you always have. First of all, check your histogram and note that it's, there's nothing that's crushed in the shadows and there's nothing that's blown out in the highlights. It's not like any of the original images. While you're at it, turn on your shadow clipping warning and your highlight clipping warning just to make sure you capture all the detail you want. What I often do, but not always, you'll have to use your discretion, 
is I bring the highlight slider down. And what you're going to see happening is that all of a sudden, there's detail out here. You can see detail in the trees, you can see detail in the snow. I don't know if you noticed, but there's something that's almost like, kind of like a turquoise color. That's a backyard skating rink, and the ice has kind of a bluish tinge to it. Even that's visible along with shadows along the edge of the rink. If I go to shadows and turn that up, now I start to see things on the inside of the house. And so right now it's way better than any of the individual images, but you can still do more. Keeping the black clipping on, take your black slider and move it slightly. And if you go too far, you're going to see the clipping warning turn on. This is where the image begins to turn black. And because that's not an area where I care too much about detail, I'm willing to take a little bit of pure black in exchange for better contrast. Now, you could argue, hey, let's do the same with white, but with snow, I get a little bit nervous. Like, if you go too far, things just look awful. It's hard to keep detail in snow, so I wouldn't go too far on this particular image. But if you do a before and after, look at this. This has got a lot more detail and you can continue working on this as you want. You can play with clarity, you can play with contrast, you can play with exposure, you can change the temperature, the vibrance, all that stuff is up to you. The tough work has been done now. When you're finished with this and you're reasonably happy, click OK. It's now going to open up in Photoshop. It's going to have a file name called Untitled HDR or something like that. And you can do further editing, or you can say, I'm done with this. Go File, Save As. And uh, at this point, you can save it as a Photoshop document, or you can save it as a JPEG. I would recommend saving... Oh, I already have this same image because I've been practicing here, so let's call it HDR2A. Go Save. I would keep this at quality level 12, and I think... Um, if you're using raw images that are close to 20 megs, I think you end up with something like a 5 or 6 meg JPEG. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in class. Bye for now.